I've learned this the hard way. People come to me many times and they'll say, Pastor, is it okay to? I don't even answer that question anymore. You come and ask me if something's okay, I probably just won't ever give you a direct answer. And I'll tell you why. Because you're going to do what I say is okay and a whole lot more. You're going to say, well, pastor does this, and I'm not even pastor, so... <laughs> Take it as far as you can. And I just don't answer those questions. Pastor, what should I wear? You read the Scripture. Amen. Learn what to wear. Amen. Pastor, is it okay for a Christian to watch? No, don't watch anything. Pastor, is it okay for a Christian to go? Absolutely not. And that's a fact. I mean... Well, isn't, isn't this song? None of the songs. Well, isn't that movie? No. None of them. Well, isn't this place? No. You know why? Because if that's okay, then your brother and sister in Christ is going to take it and run with it. And Christian, you ought to know better. That's good. You ought to know better. You ought to go anywhere or do anything or have any fun at all. <laughs> If it'll hurt your brother or sister in Christ. That's good. Mm -hmm. Pastor, there's nothing wrong with that. Yes, there is. Mm -hmm. Your knowledge puffs up. You say, well, I know where the line is and I'm going to get next to it. Now, Christian, get away from that line because you get your friend over it and they'll get zapped. Right. You don't want that to happen. Don't hurt your friends. You never hurt somebody by practicing separation and holiness and self-denial. And it may be something you've got permission for or liberty to do. And you may have some knowledge about it. By the way, you probably don't have more knowledge than the other people that are deferring. A lot of times people say, well, they're not doing this and this and this. It's because they don't know they can. It might be because they're loving and they don't want to hurt you. Amen. We need to change our attitudes as Christians. Amen. We need to let love come first and say what's best for our people. What's best for my brother or sister in Christ? And the rule is love. The rule is love. Is it better to know all the answers? Listen, my friend, you don't have to know whether it's right or wrong not to eat meat. You don't have to do it. Well, I'm unclear about it, but I'm okay because I'm just not going to do it. And it doesn't really matter. Well, what if you get a vitamin deficiency? Well, then you'll die and go to heaven. Amen. Take your vitamin deficiency. Mm. Friend, that's love. Well, Pastor, i got to look out for myself. That's not love. It's knowledge as a weapon. It's high time as believers we stop looking out for ourselves. And as the Scripture says, look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Amen. You ought to look around. You ought to figure out how you can keep from offending your brother or sister in Christ. The thing that you can do to help them spiritually, keep them from being there. You don't want your brothers and sisters hanging out in the idol's temple. You don't want a baby Christian out at the temple of the idols where all that wickedness and debauchery is going on. You don't want to expose them to that. What in the world are you going to sit on the temple steps and eat meat for? What if they go there? What if they go in and get it while they're sacrificing it so it can be fresher? And you'll put somebody in a bad position and they'll sin. The interesting thing about it is, the Bible says in verse 11, Through thy knowledge shall thy weak brother perish for whom Christ died. I remember the first time in my life, somebody... And I know I'm not so naive as to think it's the only time, but the first time that really occurred to me that I'd hurt someone. But a Christian friend of mine who was born in much the same circumstances that I was, and we'd made a commitment to the Lord that we were going to read our Bibles every day. And I was about 16 years old, and my friend came and spent the night at my house. And for whatever reason, that night I was just too embarrassed to read my Bible in front of him. And a couple years later, he wasn't living right. And my, he would always come. All my friends used to come and talk to my mom. And I remember kind of half asleep sitting in the living room. My friend had come over to see me, but he really came over to talk to my mom. And 
they're having a conversation, and I remember hearing him say something to the effect of, she's asking him, how'd you ever get here? Why, what are you doing this for? And he said, it all started the night I came here to spend the night with Ryan, and he didn't read his Bible. <laughs> that hurt. It hurt because it's true. And it hurt because he was hurt. Yeah. And I had to confess it as sin and get forgiveness from God for it. And Christian, what you do is important and you'll answer the Lord for it. Don't go around being the weaker brother. So many of you are like, well, I'm the weaker brother. So I'm the one that gets hurt here. Not the guy that hurts my friend. I want to tell you, you're under the authority and the preaching of the Word of God tonight, and you have the responsibility to be the stronger brother. And you ought to practice holiness and separation because of it. Amen. Because you'll hurt somebody, and someday you'll find out about it, whether it be in this life or when you stand before God. And it don't matter. And verse 12 says, When ye so sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Can we read that again? When ye so sin against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. Friends, sin sin, but all sin's against God, isn't it? That's not okay. And it's not just an opinion, or just he says, she says, or I'm not going to hurt anybody here. My friend, when you hurt somebody, you'll answer to God. Wherefore, if me make my brother to offend... I'll eat no flesh while the world standeth, lest I make my brother to offend. And the answer is, if it's offensive, don't do it. The Apostle Paul, it's interesting how he put it. How long was the world going to stand from the time that Christ returned? Did the Apostle Paul expect Christ to return in his lifetime? Yes. He did, didn't he? he studied Scripture. How long was the world going to stand after Christ's return? It wasn't. At least a thousand years. At least a thousand years. And so in his mind, the Apostle Paul said, as long as this earth, he said, if it's a thousand years that I can't do this, then I won't do it if it makes my brother to offend. Pastor, what are the rules here? What if nobody's looking? I don't think you love your brother if you care about the rules. I don't think you love your brother if you care about the rules. Because the point here is don't hurt your brother. And Christian, I don't know how this applies to you personally, but I know it does. And I don't know the situation or the scenario in your life where the Lord will use this message, but, but He will. And you and I need to learn truth, love, and deferring. Truth is not a weapon. Love puts others first. And when I put someone else first, I give up my rights or defer them. And that's an important testimony to the saved and to the lost. And you practice it and you'll find that you'll help the brothers and you'll win the lost. Heavenly Father, help us to obey Your Word in this matter. God, help us by convicting us about this, this truth this week in our lives as we practice loving our brothers and loving the lost. And show us when we sin and help us to make it right. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Chris, if you want, you can move that meeting up 15 minutes or something. Sure. Everybody is so minded.